What is up guys, Tim Murray here. Today we're going to be making a distorted HX stomp patch completely from scratch. I have not planned for this video whatsoever, I'm just going to completely wing this and see where we go. This had been requested by a couple of you guys, so if you have any more suggestions, fire them down in the comment section below. Just a wee bit of housekeeping first, the guitar I'm using is my Warmoth Telecaster, which has a bare knuckle silo in the bridge, a flat 50 in the neck, and it's also got a piezo system in it, which I probably won't be using in this video. If you'd like to learn more about this guitar, click on the card up here. Right, so jumping straight into it, what I'm going to be using is the HX edit window, because I've got this plugged in via USB. So much easier doing it on the computer than it is doing it on the unit itself, so like, if you are making patches from scratch, this is the best way to do it. Seeing as I'm also going to give away this patch for free, I'm not going to use any external IRs or anything like that. So, let's try and make this completely in the box. Alright, cool, so we're going to start with the amp and cab. Now a user by the name of Turbo Plasma Chicken, which is quite honestly a fantastic name, um, has suggested the archetype lead, so let's give that a go today. Just up my level a bit. That's actually not too bad, not too bad. What we'll do is we'll immediately go to the input section here and then turn on the gate. And go about that. Shorter decay time. And then up this to 1M. By using this gate here, you don't have to use up an extra block in the HX signal path, so use this gate every time. Like, it's well worth it. Now of course what we're going to do is we're going to want to boost at the front of this, so I love using the Scream 808, but because this is the uh, version 3 firmware, I'm going to use the Horizon Drive. That's nice, maybe a bit, bit brighter, a bit brighter. Now on my pedal board I have a Horizon Devices Nano Attack, which is the attack knob from the Horizon Drive itself. But seeing as we're keeping this all in the box, I'm going to use the attack function here and put it to my favourite, which is number four. That's actually sounding pretty wicked already. Now we'll go over to the cabinet window here, and now I'm a big fan of the oversized Mesa from the ML Sound Lab, so closest thing to that would be the XXL V30 here. <laughs> Nice, nice. Right now we'll just change the mic. Now I kind of like that one, but it is kind of a wee bit heavy in the bass range, so what I'll do is I'll go to a block here, go to the EQ section, and then click Tilt. What Tilt does is that it will make the tone brighter or darker just using one setting, so you don't have to do anything like parametric or graphic like any of the other EQs. So because this one's a wee bit too bassy for my liking, I'm just going to up it a wee bit to the right. <laughs> So of course that's pretty much the bass tone and that's what I would use to get started. So now what we can do is add a few more effects, maybe a delay and reverb for some leads, or we can get into pitch shifting. Let's do that. So at the very start of your chain, go to pitch and synth, pitch wham, yeah. Now this will automatically be bypassed when you first put it on, so here we go. And I've got an expression pedal plugged in too. Which is EXP2. Yeah, we might have to alter some settings there. And now, we want to change the heel pitch. Down five. But it's basically putting this guitar in drop G, if you're wondering. Now we'll go down, let's go down, yeah, let's go down to negative seven. So that'll be what? Drop F. That 
Now, like, it, it works. It, it doesn't sound fantastic. Like, I would fully suggest using an 8-string for this, but... <laughs> That does a pretty damn good job just by itself, eh? So, if you don't have an 8-string or anything like that, I would fully suggest playing around with this, because it is pretty fun. Now what we'll do is we'll actually move the distortion unit over here one, just so we can put something after the pitch. Now, what I would suggest doing here is that with pitch shifting, it can kind of change the timbre of the guitar, you know, might make it a bit more bass sounding before the amp, which can muddy things up. So, once again, go to the EQ section. Um, let's use, I might just use a 10-band graphic for this one. I think I kind of want some upper mid-range in there again. I'm going to up a couple here and just kind of see what it sounds like. Alright, of course you're not going to want to have that pitch and EQ on all the time, so now let's assign this to something so that we can turn it on and off. So, really simple to do in HX Edit, all you have to do is right click on the pitch here, bypass assign, and then let's assign that to foot switch 2, which is the middle foot switch on the HX stomp unit. Now, we'll do the exact same thing for the EQ here, and now, there we go. So. That's just your standard drop C, drop F. <laughs> now with your controller assignments, you can get even wackier. So let's go back to the pitch. I should probably turn it on first. Now, of course, the heel pitch parameter here is what's causing it to drop down negative seven semitones. But what we can actually do is that we can have this heel pitch assigned to one of the foot switches as well so that it will drop it even lower or maybe raise it up again. So same as the bypass assign, if you just right click heel pitch here, we've got a foot switch one. Now, when we click the foot switch, it's gonna change. Now, of course, we haven't set this to a custom range yet, so it's gonna go negative 24 and positive 24, which is highly unusable. So let's go over to bypass controller assign here. Go over here to heel pitch, and then let's make this one, one of them to negative seven. And you know, let's just go to let's just go to double drop C, eh? Negative twelve. <laughs> you gotta press it once for it to actually enable. <laughs> Alright, so now, that's drop F, double drop C, just by the press of a button. Okay, now that I've had too much fun with the pitch controls on this, let's go to doing a delay and reverb for the end of the tone. Now the really wicked thing about version 3 firmware for the HX Stomp is that you now have 8 blocks instead of the usual 6. Of course, you've still got the DSP limitation, so some things that use a lot of DSP power will, of course, reduce the amount that you can actually use, but hey, you've got eight blocks at your disposal now, this is fantastic. Now the thing I really like about the HX Stomp is you can use stereo effects. So if I go down to delay here and then go here, stereo, you've now got a bunch of delays that will kind of widen the stereo field and make this sound really lush. I want to use the mod chorus echo because I think this might be kind of cool. <laughs> Now, I am not a lead player, this is a full disclaimer right now, but you'll get an idea. That's pretty cool. It's a feature that may confuse a few people is trails, and this is a really cool feature which I would suggest to use. Now, if you turn this on, of course, it doesn't change the sound whatsoever. What it does change is when you turn the delay off. So, now I bypass. You notice it doesn't cut off straight away. It actually lets the tails ring out a wee bit more. If you have this off, delay gone immediately and it just sounds a bit abrupt. 
So if you're using delay and reverb and it has this functionality here, I would fully suggest using it. Might slower the mix a wee bit. And now let's try to do a reverb. Something that you're gonna to wanna to note here is that because you've selected a stereo delay, you're gonna to wanna to select a stereo reverb as well. Otherwise it's gonna push everything back into mono and probably sound a wee bit weird. So we will go down to, where is it? Reverb, stereo, cool. And we've still got all of the DSP power available so we can actually select any of these that we want. Let's try plateau. Let's not try plateau. <laughs> That sounds so cool. Now I like that, but it is a wee bit too much. That is quite a lot of reverb. So we'll turn trails on and let's go mix down a wee bit, 30%. Let's try the neck pickup. Now, I don't think we need double drop C, so I'm going to go to the delay here, bypass the sign, and then I'm gonna put these on foot switch one, and then making sure to go here, turn that off. Cool, so now, what will happen is that if we click the first foot switch, we're now turning the reverb and delay off. Just before we finish off this tone, what I'll do is I'll go back into the amp and cab and maybe change a few of the parameters there. We haven't really touched it yet. Now, bias is an interesting feature which allows you to get basically cold tubes versus warm tubes. Cold tubes meaning that the sound is gonna be a lot brighter, kind of a bit more harsh on the ears, whereas warmth is gonna give you a nice mid-range push with the highs rolled off a wee bit. Let's see what works in context with this. Gotta say, for once, I actually think I prefer warmth. Let's up the mid-range a wee bit. Maybe back the presence off. Cool, so now what we'll do is we'll save this tone before I change preset and completely forget about it. So we go up here, and what should we call this? Let's call this Murray Metal. Now what I'll do is I will upload this tone for free as well so you guys can play with it on your HX stomps. Think it may also work with HX Native and maybe the Helixes as well, but we'll see. So thanks for watching, I really hope you enjoyed this. This is kind of a new style of video for me. You'll notice that with my other videos, I'm very well spoken and that's because I've basically scripted the whole video. I'm not very good at talking to a camera, it just feels very unnatural to me. So if you've got any pointers for me or anything that I can improve on, let me know in the comment section below. What I'll quickly do though, is I'll just change over to another guitar so you can hear it in context with, of course, different pickups, different wood, maybe a few extra strings, we'll see. Okay, I couldn't help myself, I got an eight string. So this is my Solar Guitars A1.8C, which of course has the Duncan Solar pickups in the bridge and the neck, and it's also got a 27 inch scale neck rather than the 25 that my Warmoth has. Let's see what it sounds like. actually sounds pretty good on this. Something that you should also note here is that I have this in position two, which is the single coil bridge. So this is what it sounds like humbucking. I seem to really enjoy using this in the single coil mode because it just has this different sound to it that I really enjoy. And then with the delay and reverb. Mm. 
and might as well. Let's try it with the pitch shift. I actually think the EQ makes this sound worse. I still probably wouldn't use that, let's be honest. So thanks for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day. Timmy out.